be able to come into your presence and to be able to worship you. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us each and every day, for your protection, your provision, and God, for being our Lord and our Savior. And Father, I pray for this service this morning. God, that you would anoint every song we sing. God, every word we speak. God, that we'll bring glory and honor and praise to you. Father, we ask all this today in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said today, let's worship him. Let's have church today. Amen. Man, once again, uh, congratulations, Pastor. And I hope I look as good as you do when I'm 70. Uh, <laughs> I can say that because I love my pastor. I am much older than he is. And I hope that God continues to bless and keep him. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's enter into our worship service this morning, church, as we sing, Jesus is the light of the world. shines his light upon us he removes the power of darkness he is the light of the world jesus is the light of the world he is the light of the world when he shines his light upon us he removes the power of darkness. He is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. Sing it one more time. He is the light of the world. When he shines his light upon us, he removes the power of darkness. He is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. Lift Jesus higher. Lift Jesus higher. Lift him up for the world to see. Lift Jesus higher, lift him up for the world to see. He said, If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher, lift him up for the world to see. He said, If I be lifted up, from the earth I will draw all men unto me. Lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher. Oh, lift him up for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, Amen. Give God a hand clap this morning, church. Amen. Amen. Come on down, send it on down, 
comes and then on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, Lord, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Lord, we're your children and we are asking for you to send the fire. Now our hearts are hungry, our spirits are thirsty, we need to feel your power. And just like the prophets, he said it would be, in the last days an outpouring we see. Yes, we are waiting, we're anticipating, Lord, won't you send the Holy Ghost down? Send it on down, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, Lord, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come Lord, we're on down. Lord, we're your children, and we are asking for you to send a fire. Now our hearts are hungry, our spirits are thirsty, we need to feel your power. Oh, just like the prophets, he said it would be, in the last days and now pouring we see. Yes, we are waiting, we're anticipating, Lord, won't you send the Holy Ghost down? Send it on down, Lord, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Heavenly Father, hear our call, let your Holy Spirit fall. Send down the power, let it fall like rain, as we lift our praises to your name. Send it on down, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, Lord, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on. Lord. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. 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 Lord, we're your children. Yes, hallelujah. Abundantly, more than you can even imagine and say, I say unto thee this day, my people, knock and ask, and it shall be open, saith the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We stand in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, we're your children. Oh, yes. And we are asking. For you to send the fire, for our hearts are hungry, our spirits are thirsty, we need to feel your power, oh just like the prophets, he said it would be, in the last days and outpouring we see. Yes, we are waiting, we're anticipating, Lord, 
won't you send the Holy Ghost down? Send it on down, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Oh, send it on down, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, hear our Spirit fall, send down the power, let it fall like rain, as we lift our praises to your name. Send it on down, send it on down, Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Send it on down, send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. Jesus. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare your our living home. Your presence, Lord. Sing that again. There's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare your living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more, there's nothing worth more. That will ever come close, no thing can compare, you're our living hope, your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen, hallelujah, oh, I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free. And my shame is undone in your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. 
Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence. Sing that one more time. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome. By your presence, Lord. Yes, Jesus, your presence. Your presence. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No, nothing compare to his presence. For you see, when you're in his presence, all that hurt goes away. For when you're in His presence, all that pain goes away. When you're in His presence, all that anxiety goes away. For that's what we desire is to be in the, to the presence of the God, Jehovah. Be in the presence for one day we're going to be in his presence when we're going to stand before him. Oh, I long for that day. How I long for that day. Sing this one more time. Whatever you're going through this morning, whatever struggles, whatever problems, whatever's going on this morning, just get into his presence. Get into his presence. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Oh, yes. In your presence, Lord. Sing that one more time. I've tasted and seen. Yes, Jesus. Lord, I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is unshunned In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit oh, yes, Jesus Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come fly Fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Our Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. 
is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Oh, your presence, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Have I not said where two or three would come together and my name might be there? I am here amongst thee this day, my children. I am moving in thy midst. I am going from heart to heart and breast to breast. Open thy heart and let me come in. Let me be thy God and I will comfort thee. I will strengthen thee. I will lead thee and I will guide thee. For I am a God with an everlasting love. And I love thee this day, my yes, children. Jesus. And I say unto thee, come unto me. For I am God and yes, I love thee this Jesus. day, my children. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you missed this morning Sunday school, you missed something good. But as Sister Paul was talking about in the Scripture, Paul talks about, you know, we focus so much on the things of this world. But he says, don't focus on the things of this world, but focus on the heavenly things. And this morning, God wants us to focus on Him. Push the struggle to the side right now. Push the heartaches, push whatever you're going through to the side. And let Him flood this place with His presence. For you see, when His presence floods this place, it is something that you're not going to be able to see that is earthly. That's when you're going to see people walking out of here coming in in crutches and walking out and running out. That's for when you see the struggles that you're going through just wash away. It's when we put His, His presence. One more time, I just want to go over this because I just feel His presence here this morning. God wants to do something this morning. He wants to... There's somebody here this morning that is struggling. There's somebody here this morning that just seems like maybe I can't go on anymore. They feel like the pressure is too much. They feel like right now they're about to collapse. But I want to tell you, God says, I will take care of it. You focus on me. Let me focus on the problem. You worship me and I'll take care of everything else. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the What our hearts long for To be overcome By your presence, Lord Yes, Lord, just overwhelm us with your presence, Jesus Thank you, Jesus Yes, I don't know what you're going through But with the raising of your hand, you're saying, brother I need God to take care of something 
I can't do it, but God can do it. Dear Heavenly Father, we look to you this morning, God. Oh, Lord, just flood this place with your presence, God. You know the troubles. You know the struggles. You know the hurt and the pain. God, you know everything. For God, there is not one need here this morning, God. There's not one need that you cannot take care of. And God, we are gathered here to get into your presence. We are gathered here to put all the troubles to the side, to put all the problems to the side. We are here today, this morning, to worship you, to get into your presence. Oh, Lord, to get into your presence. Oh, Lord, we, we hunger for you, God. We hunger for you, God. Touch us, God. Move and guide, and we give you glory. We give you honor, and we give you praise, God. We ask that you put your hand upon our pastor this morning, God. That, God, you will just touch him and anoint him in such a mighty way, God. That, God, there will be no pain, there will be no hurt, but, God, God, his presence is beyond him so powerfully, God, that your presence will just spread through here, God. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master,
something about that day. Hallelujah. Yes, there's something about that day. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to sing this course again this morning. If you're here and you're going through something this morning, you're battling something in your body, battling something in your mind or your life. I want us to sing that again, and I want you to just speak out the name of Jesus. Because how many knows in the name of Jesus there's power and authority, there's healing, there's deliverance, there's salvation. Everything we need is in Jesus. So whatever you need this morning, I want us to sing it again. And let's speak out the name of Jesus and let Him touch you and do what you need done in your life this morning. Hallelujah. Sing. Jesus. Come on, speak it out. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. There's just something about that name. Master, everything below the earth and bow down and confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen. I don't know what he means to you, but he is my Lord and my Savior. He's done so much for me this morning, and I give him honor and praise today. Can we give him a hand clap before you're seated today? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. If it wasn't for Jesus, where would we be? You may be seated this morning. Good to feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the house this morning. If you have your Bibles today, I'd like you to turn to Matthew 29, or Matthew 11, verse 29. And we're going to read verse 29 and 30. Matthew 11, verse 29 and verse 30. If you'd like to stand, if you're able, for the reading of the Word. <clears throat> Feel free to do so. It says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This morning I want to preach on the thought of God's yoke is easy. God's yoke is easy. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your presence. Oh, God, we love you this morning, and thank you for being here with us. And, Father, I stand here understanding, God, I cannot do this by myself. God, I need you this morning. Holy Ghost, anoint me, flow through me, use me, help me to be a willing vessel, Lord, that you might help me to speak the word, God, today under the unction and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God, anoint every ear to hear and every heart to receive. And God, I pray it all this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God's yoke is easy. 
I want to thank God this morning for His touch. Last two nights, last two days, I haven't been able to sleep. I've had, I got teeth cut out on Monday, and I had a big idea of going to get a crown on Friday. And they tried to pull that crown, off, the temporary crown off, and it, my legs and feet just shot up. My hands shot out. It hit a nerve or something, and they had to give me a shot back where they pulled out wisdom teeth. And I've just been in pain for the last two days. The teeth pulling wasn't so bad, but that crown thing, man, it was bad. But anyway... I couldn't sleep, I couldn't get comfortable everywhere I lay because I had tea pulled on this side, tea pulled on that side. I couldn't find a comfortable place. But being in the presence of God this morning, I feel touched and refreshed. Amen? Being in God's presence, how many of those makes a difference in our lives? Amen? But today I want to preach on the thought, amen, God's yoke is easy. The word yoke, amen, according to the dictionary, and you probably all know what a yoke is, but it's a wooden cross piece that was fastened over the necks of two animals, or they would take ox or mules or horses or whatever, and they would yoke them together to plow a field or to pull a, a wagon or do things back in the old days, back before John Deere and all the other things we have today, farm all and whatever. Amen. They got, they got GPS on the thing where they guide themselves. But back in the day, they had the yoke that they would put upon two animals, amen, that they might plow a field or pull an animal, amen, to be able to uh, do, their, do their crops or pull their carts or whatever. But a yoke was used to keep the two animals together. Amen. It was strong, and it couldn't be broken very easily. I'm sure there were some that had been broke, but they... We're very strong. But anyway, that's not my point. The point is, hey man, God's yoke is easy. First of all, today we need to realize we're all yoked up to something. Something is directing and pulling your life. It's either God or the devil. You may say, I don't worship the devil. How many knows you don't have to be a devil worshiper to be yoked up to the devil? Because how many knows if you're not yoked up to God, you're yoked up to the devil? How I many knows there's no in-between? Either you're with God or you're not with God. Amen. So I ask you today the question, what are you yoked up to? Amen. The Word of God says to take my yoke upon you. How I many knows this morning God will not force His yoke upon you? God will not force Himself upon nobody. Amen. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. you got to call on Him and ask Him to yoke Himself up to us or for us to be able to yoke up to Him. Amen? God does not force His yoke upon nobody. Amen? God gives us the free will to choose whether we want to yoke up to God or yoke up to ourselves. Amen? Or more or less yoke up to the devil. Because if you're yoked up to yourself and you're not yoked up to God, how many knows you're going to spend eternity without God? Amen? Jesus wants us to yoke up to Him. He wants us to choose Him. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. It says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that, that, that both thou and thy seed may live. Every single day of our lives, we have a choice to make. Am I going to yoke up to God? Or am I going to yoke up to the devil? Amen. Am I going to yoke up to the Lord and enjoy his blessings? Or am I going to live under the yoke of Satan and the cursings of God? Amen. It is our choice to choose every single day who and what I'll be yoked up to. Amen. But the Lord says, I call heaven and earth a record this day against you that you have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. It's up to us to choose. Amen. That's what I'm trying to say. The Word of God tells us in Matthew, take my yoke. Take it. Put it on. It's up to you to receive salvation. Amen. It's up to you to say, I'm going to serve God. Amen. So if you choose to serve God, you can live under the blessing of God. But if you choose not to yoke up to God, you've got to suffer the consequences. Amen. 
Now, we all know Satan likes to force his yoke upon us. But how many knows God will not force his yoke upon us? Galatians 5 verse 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. When we make the choice and the decision, amen, to yoke up to Jesus, how many knows we are yoking up to the freedom, amen, from our sin? Amen. When we yoke up to Christ, amen, He brings a yoke of freedom to our lives. Amen. But as when we yoke up to Christ, amen, Satan, old slewfoot, he wants to do everything he can to try to convince us or try to entangle us with his yoke of bondage. He wants to distract us. He wants to get our eyes off the Lord, amen, and get our eyes off something else that he can slip in and put his yoke on you. Jesus won't force himself upon us. How many knows the devil? He's not a gentleman. He's happy to take his yoke and throw it on you. How many knows Jesus wants us to take it and put it on? But the devil, he's happy to say, all right, here you go. Boom, he puts it on and he starts pulling you in directions you really don't want to go. Amen. He don't ask for permission. Jesus stands at the heart's door and he knocks. But the devil, he kicks the door down in and says, come on, let's go. I'm going to put this thing on you and I'm going to drag you around like a rag doll. Amen. When we, when we take God's yoke, we got to learn of him. Amen. When we take his yoke, we need to learn of him. Amen. Philippians 3 verse 10 says that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. How many knows there's power in his resurrection? We just celebrated Easter last Sunday. The power of his resurrection. Amen. We're the works of his resurrection. If you know Christ as your Lord and Savior, amen, we're the works of his resurrection. Amen. But it says that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, that the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Once we get saved, once we put his yoke upon us and we accept Christ in our lives, how many of those is not over? We must continue to learn of him. I don't know it all. And I got a lot more to learn. When we stop learning, we get comfortable. And the word of God says if we're lukewarm... He'll spit us out of his mouth, right? He said, I'd rather be hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out. So when we quit learning of the Lord, amen, we become comfortable, amen, and then, oh, Satan can sneak in and stick that yoke back on our neck. But as long as we have breath, we must continue to seek the Lord and continue to say, I want to learn more about him. Amen. As we take his yoke and we allow him to place his I mean, heart, I mean, as he comes into our lives and he places his yoke upon us, we must learn of him. Amen. He died and he rose. Why? So we could have Easter? No. So we could go to be with him, right? It's more than Easter. He said, I'll be a friend that will stick closer to the brother. He said, lo, I'm with you always. Not just Easter, but on Monday when you're having a hard day, He's there. When you're going through the struggles of life, He's there. But if you don't know Him, then you don't know that, right? So we got to... Anyway, how many knows it takes a daily walk and a daily talk with the Lord? So purpose in your heart, you're going to learn more about Him, all right? Because I believe the more you want to learn of Him and the more you want... Amen. Have a desire to learn of Him. It's easier to stay under His yoke. I have no desire to go back. Amen. There's nothing to go back to. I got a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Amen. Why? Because I've yoked up to Jesus. And I want to learn. And what I've learned so far, it's been good. Amen. Taste and see. The Lord is good. Taste and see. He is good. Amen. Amen. So purpose in your heart today, I'm going to learn more about the Lord. How many knows the yoke of the transgressor is hard? Proverbs 13, verse 15. 
Good understanding giveth favor. But the way of the transgressor is hard. The life of a sinner is hard. Amen? Don't act like you ain't never been there. Don't act like you ain't never had that yoke on. We thought we were having fun. We thought we were living life. But how many knows we didn't have that friend that would stick closer than a brother? And how many knows when life problems came, we had to try to deal with them by ourselves? Amen. How many knows today? Amen. We can try to put on the yoke of the world or try to put on the yoke of the devil and try to put on a good face. But how many knows down on the inside, there's an empty place. There's a void in your heart. Amen. That nothing or no one else will ever feel except for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We can gain money. We can gain fame. We can gain everything this world has to offer. But if we don't know Jesus, amen, we got a void in our hearts. How many of those will never be happy? No matter how much stuff you get, there's still an emptiness. Amen, I've said this before. You want to know why people that are famous, that have all kinds of money and everything the world has to offer, kill themselves? Because they're empty right here. They're not yoked up to God. They have a void, an empty place that fame couldn't fill, that fortune couldn't fill, that the things the world had to offer them could not fill. The only way we're going to be complete is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Colossians 2 verse 10 says, And ye are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power. How many knows who Him is? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. We are complete in the Lord. Amen? When you yoke up to the Lord and you accept Christ into your heart and into your life, He brings completeness. He fills that void. Sister Poole talking about earthly things. How many of those earthly things aren't that important anymore when you know your hole's filled? We don't find completeness in the church. We don't find completeness in the denomination. We don't find completeness in a man or a woman. We find completeness in yoking our lives up to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's it. That's what will complete the soul of a man. Amen? Jesus' yoke completes you. Jesus made the way for us. Amen? He made the way. He didn't want to make it hard. How many knows he did the hard stuff? You think, man, you don't know what I'm going through. No, I don't, but Jesus went through a lot harder. He went through the hard stuff to make it easier for us. He made the way. Amen? John 14, verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen? When we have to yoke ourselves up to the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, how many knows we find the way? He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. Amen? He gave His life to complete our lives. He gave His life to give you the way, to show you the way, to say the ticket has been paid for. Your soul has been purchased by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He loves each, like I said last week, He loves each and every one of us unconditionally. Amen? He loves us not like human love, but with a supernatural love. See, Human love is conditional, but his love is unconditional. Amen? He came to be the way, so yoke yourself up to him. And how many knows he'll lead you to the right way? He gave us the armor to put on. Ephesians 6, verse 10 and 11. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. How many knows when we yoke up to Jesus, we give our hearts to the Lord, we need to develop a strong relationship, not a casual relationship. Amen. The Word of God says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord 
Amen? Make up your mind. I'm going to serve God every day of my life. I'm going to do everything that I can to serve God. Amen? Have a strong walk, a strong relationship with Him. And put on the armor. He gave us the armor. He gave us His life. He gave us everything we need to serve Him. That's why He said, My yoke is easy and my burden's light. But when you try to do it yourself, how many knows it comes hard? But He says, What? Cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. Don't do it yourself. Know that you're yoked up to Him that will do it with you. Amen? And for you. See, I say this and I'll say it till I die and she's going to put it on my tombstone. Right? If you live for God hard, it's easy. But if you live for God easy, it's hard. You hear? If you live for God easy, it's hard. You'll struggle. If you only pray when you need something. If you only come to church when you want to get something. Amen. When you only open up the Bible when you're having problems. You're living for God easy. And can I tell you, you're going to struggle your whole life. But if you'll give God everything and say, I'm going to serve God as hard as I serve the devil and even harder, how many knows it becomes easier? I have no desire to go back. I gave it all to Him. He gave it all for me. Amen. And I want to do everything I can to walk this walk and live my life for Him. I want to live hard for the Lord. I live hard for sin. I live hard for hell. I want to live hard for the kingdom of God. Amen. But if you want to live for God easy, can I tell you, you're going to struggle all your life. But if you'll purpose in your heart, I'm going to serve God hard, it becomes easier. But let me tell you, I'm not painting you some lie of some phony picture today. Serving God, we're always going to have a struggle. We're always going to have a fight. We're always going to have a battle raging in the flesh against the Spirit. We're always going to have a war. How many knows the Spirit will, oh. <laughs> the Spirit will always prevail. Amen. Maybe that will help cool it down in here. <laughs> That's Morris code from God. He said, I love you. <laughs> How many knows He wants it all? God wants it all. He don't want half your life, half your heart, half your family. He wants it all. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13, it says, It shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto my commands, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve Him with all your heart, with all your soul. Amen. God wants everything. Jesus gave it all last Friday, Good Friday. We celebrated Good Friday. He gave it all. We talked about it on Friday and on Sunday, how he could have walked away. He could have called a legion of angels to come rescue him from the cross. He could have walked away when the soldiers fell to the ground as dead men. Amen. He could have walked away and not did what he did. But he gave it all. He went to the cross. He gave his life. He allowed them to beat him and go through all that he went through. Amen. That he might give it all for you and I. And he asked in return that we present our bodies a living sacrifice, which is our reasonable service. God wants all your life. Not your leftovers. Not just when it's convenient. Not just when you can work Him in your schedule. God wants it all. Not that He's being mean or trying to be forceful. How many knows He'll let you live half a life? He'll let you live however you want. Somebody came to me one time and said, you know, you go to your church, you can't do this, you can't do that, and you can't do this, you can't do that. I looked at him and said, you know what? You can do whatever you want at my church. Because my church don't make you do anything. It's God that says, hey, I give you something better. See, I can still smoke. I can still drink. I can still cuss if I want to. But guess what? He's not going to welcome me into the kingdom. But guess what? I choose not to because I don't want to no more. It's not that I can't. I don't want to. Amen? I don't want to cuss. I don't want to drink. I don't want to crowd. I don't want to do the things of the world. I give my life to Christ, and I want to serve Him with everything in me. 
Amen? Give Him all your life. You're tired of being up and down, in and out? Give it all to the Lord. Lay it all on the altar. Don't come tell me. Lay it all on the altar and tell Him. Amen? He said if we'll confess our sin, what? He's faithful and just to forgive. Amen? Let's go on. How many knows we need to get full of the Holy Ghost? Amen? Acts 1 and 8. We're Pentecostal. You ought to know this one. It says, But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. How many knows when Jesus left, He sent us the Comforter. He sent us the Holy Ghost. Amen. To give us power that we need to overcome sin, overcome temptation. Amen. To be better witnesses and help us as we walk this Christian walk. Amen. The Word of God says, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, as He walked this earth, the Bible says He was full of the Holy Ghost. If Jesus, the Son of God, needed to be full of the Holy Ghost, how much more do you and I need Need to be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Because how many knows when you're full of something, something else can't get in? When you're full of the Holy Ghost, the things of the world can't sneak in. Because there ain't no room for them. The thought of going back ain't there no more because I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Fill your life with the Holy Ghost. Allow Him to work in your life. Amen. How many knows it's not just a one-time thing where you spoke in tongues in it all or 30 years ago? How many know the Holy Ghost is a man just like the, amen, the third person in the Godhead? He wants to be active in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's move on. His burden is light. Aren't you glad tonight his burden, or today his burden is light? Amen. The cares of life, the weight of the world, it's heavy, isn't it? He don't want this thing, serving God, to be hard. He don't want you to feel like it's a burden to serve God. I mean, I, I'm telling you, it'll take, it'll take a fight. But it shouldn't feel like an obligation. It should feel like an opportunity. If serving God's an obligation, you need to come back to the altar. Because your obligation to serve God is not going to want to take. It takes a relationship, a communication, prayer, devotion, coming to the house of God, coming out to Sunday school, coming out to Bible study on Wednesday night. It takes work. It takes. I, I'm not saying works is going to save you because works has nothing to do with it. But the more you know of Him, the more you learn of Him, the more you get in His presence. How many knows the more you want to stay yoked up to Him? Hey Amen. The things of the world don't seem to pull you anymore because I'm yoked up to the Lord and I will not go back and I will not look around. I'm, i got my eyes on the prize and I'm going to allow the way. I'm going to allow the truth to lead me home. He's not trying to make it hard. He did all He did to make it easier for us. As we stand this morning today, His burden is light. He said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take it upon you. He's not trying to burden you down or to push you down in condemnation. We said it last Sunday. Jesus didn't come just to die on a cross that He could look over the portals of glory to condemn you. Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. But He came not to condemn the world, but to save the world. Amen? Jesus is seeking to save all that are lost. All that are not yoked up to Him. He wants us to be yoked to Him today. As we bow our heads and Close our eyes this morning. I believe today the Lord's standing at somebody's heart's door today, knocking, saying, will you allow me to come and to yoke myself up to you? Today the altars are open. The invitation for you today is if you'd be willing to take a step of faith and say, Lord, I need to yoke myself up to you. I need you to be Lord and number one in my life. I've allowed other things to become more important. I've allowed the cares of life and the things of the world to pull me away from you. 
Let you today come and say, Lord, I need your yoke. Yoke up to me, God. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Forgive me, I'm a sinner. That's you today. The altars are open. The invitation, the Lord stands and He says, Come, come, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If you need rest for your soul, come to this altar and say, Lord, I need you. And He's here. He's faithful. And He will forgive you. Or maybe you're here, you're serving God, trying to do the best you can. But maybe there's things that are going on in your life that seem to be pulling you away or trying to distract you from the things of God. Amen. And you'd like to come and say, Lord, help me to know you better. Help me to be sensitive to your spirit. Help me to have a greater desire to read your word and to pray and to seek your face. If that's you today, would you join these here at the altar? It don't mean you're a sinner. You're just saying, Lord, I want to know you better. Anybody else, the altars are open. If you don't want to pray up front, right where you're at, you can pray and just ask God to intervene in your life. As they sing and play, the altars are open. Can I have somebody come pray right over here, Brother Roy? Can I have some help pray with these? Sister Terry, Sister Darla. Anybody else like to come and pray? The altars are open. If you knew me then, oh, hallelujah. you believe me now. You Thank turned you, my Jesus. whole life upside down. You took the Thank old you, Jesus. and he made it new. That's just what the mercy of God Hallelujah. He's here to show mercy this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, Not condemnation. I have to tell the story how I vote. His goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. The goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. To be six feet beneath the earth For all the things I've done, the things I've said The choices made that I regret Oh, I would still be lost But for the mercy of God Oh, I the power of His blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It's the goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. Oh, I'm alive to tell the story how I've overcome. It's His goodness and mercy and the power of His blood. I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. But the goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. Was the cross meant for me that my Savior By the mercy of God Was a grace meant for me Where my sin lay buried Now I stand redeemed By the mercy of God Was a cross meant for me That my Savior carried Now I've been made free By the mercy
Nothing is better than you. Amen. How many believes that this morning? Give him a hand clap of praise. I've tried the things out there, and there ain't nothing like the Lord. Amen. He brings satisfaction and completeness to our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope the Word of God has reminded us today. Take His yoke. Put it on you. And love Him and serve Him. And you'll never regret it. Amen. Remember service tonight, 6 o'clock. Remember there's uh, green uh, uh, registration forms out there for the men's retreat. Men, if you take those home, bring them back as soon as you can. We'd appreciate it. And uh, let's bow our heads to be dismissed this morning. Brother Nate, will you dismiss us?